uh, my transition for a very short maybe description i may say it is it has not been very easy as you know there have been a lot of controversial about our or rather my resignation but now i will not dwell on that the only thing i want to say is i left ibc mm -hmm. i'm now appointed as ambassador and uh anything to do with my transition maybe i can say i give like 20 years one day i will now tell kenyans or rather the world why i resigned because already it is controversial i am not ready to to fuel any other controversial as it is as we start to count down to the election what would be your reflection of what happened in 2017 that you think is something that we must get right this time um what i can say as a person who have been in the commission as a commissioner one i would want to say that one cannot satisfy or please everybody who is a player in the election as a commissioner you cannot satisfy candidates you mm -hmm. cannot satisfy the voters so my reflection is um if you just follow your mandate to latter as a commissioner you'll be very safe Th that's interesting because in 2017 i'm sure you recall there was that judgment of the supreme court saying that they are setting yeah. things that didn't go right especially the transmission of resources that, that was the main thing mm. but what could have gone wrong that made that election specifically to be nullified and led the country to where it was that season the judgment as it were and it was done in a supreme court which is a very high court mm -hmm. and the most uh, respected highest court in our country i personally don't want to to question to elaborate to see or to try to to man, to to mend anything in that mm -hmm. conclusion mm -hmm. uh, that was there at the end of the day people look at the commission which is the commissioners and the secretariat so as we reflect on all those challenges that were in 2017 what is it that you think we must do right whether it's in the procurement of um of uh, what do you call it the technology of elections what do you think we must get right in 2017 2022 if it is the technology and if there's any something about the technology that has been upgraded let's say from 2017 now mm -hmm. to 2022 if mm -hmm. there'll be some upgrade of any type of technology it is good to to go or rather to choose something that will be upgraded because personally i believe in technology anything that is upgraded it's more mm -hmm. efficient mm -hmm. than what is being upgraded because by the time this technology this the the people who are specialized in it they thought of upgrading it them they have must they must have seen something that is mm -hmm. it's weak it's not okay. efficient so mm -hmm. that maybe could be the only thing i could talk about technology but if it is the people who are handling in ibc i could say i didn't see people who did not or rather were not able to handle the technology but the truth is technology can fail mm -hmm. technology can fail and of yeah. course as people still remember 2017 and prepare for 2022 they will say that for instance your team came into office january 2017 we had just about seven or so months to the election this time round, there are commissioners that are just about to be named and vetted by parliament. So the earliest they can be in office is towards the end of August. What challenges did you face um, that you can attribute to your late appointment or you coming into the, uh, into office so late, just about seven months to election? I, for sure, as a person, I wouldn't say that we were, there was anything that could affect our late appointment personally and i'm saying this because remember for us it was a handover there mm -hmm. was a full commission 
that had the mandate, as we were being appointed, everything in the commission was still going on. Mm -hmm. So for us, by the time we were getting into the office, remember, most of the procurement had already been done. We were maybe only taken back because, the, because of the litigation, as I've told you. Mm -hmm. And um, if uh, the secretariat is there, mm -hmm. and when commissioners come, are briefed on what is going on, I personally don't see having any problem of coming late. However, the people who are now going to be appointed, remember, they are already even going to get people who are there during mm -hmm. 2017 election. So if they work together and they are also briefed the new people and the new people can also learn very fast and get what is going on, for them it will be a whole year before election. Mm -hmm. For me still it's not late. There is also the question of uh, procurement because I recall in 2017 there were a lot of litigation whether it's at the uh, pro public procurement review board whether it's in court to the extent that um, IBC was only cleared to print the presidential ballot papers uh, with Al Gurea very late in July. Mm. What lessons did you pick that you think that this time round for people to uh, for IBC to avoid all that contestation that mm. they can be in a position to deal with it beforehand? About litigation and hiccups in procurement and I'm talking specifically about Kenyan election I want to say this provided we have more than one presidential candidate procurement hiccups and endless litigations are bound to come and that's Kenya and that's our tradition and I don't want to blame ourselves that's we that's we Kenya now, what I can say about procurement, if you are in the office, may it be a procurement uh, committee or the procurement officer in charge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what I would say is, one, follow the IBC Act. Second, follow the guidelines on Procurement Act. And as a commission, let each and everybody including everything, execute your mandate as per the constitution of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Why am I giving those three points? If someone goes to the court over any issue, provided you have, you have pegged or rather you made your decision over those three points, you'll have nothing much to be blamed on. There's the question of all this litigation and reviews they affect the timelines for IEDC and the entire election plan. How do you deal with that, especially for the new team that is coming in? They are not used to sort of the controversies that uh, bedevil an electoral process. Provided you are a commissioner of IBC, once appointed, you should be ready for those litigations. You cannot go. You cannot. In fact, what can I say? Mm -hmm. Never assume that people will not uh, come up with all those litigations about procurement. Never. It is there and it is there and it will come. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, as a commission, one board must be prepared for those litigation. And maybe what I could say, as a commission, they, they must be able to check their team of lawyers that are there you know every lawyer I, I i'm not a lawyer but i know just like doctors everybody is somehow specialized on specific type of cases mm -hmm. in the judiciary and all those um, lawyers in the mission they can act the, the commission they cannot be the same they cannot be having the same strength so the mm -hmm. best thing is, you know, this type of a lawyer, this lawyer can do very well when it comes to procurement litigation. This lawyer right. is very good in this. If they do that, also, you know, the better lawyer you have when you are in the court, the better. Mm -hmm. 
but being in the court during election in Kenya, <laughs> it is there. And I don't mm -hmm. think it will ever end. Maybe okay. we get another type of election, but if it is this one, it is there and it will be there. Reflecting on 2017, many say that uh, the fights or disagreements or the conflict between the Secretariat and the Commissioners was largely the source of the challenges that were witnessed in 2017. And of course, leading up to what we saw of uh, the removal or suspension and then ultimately the firing of uh, the former I mean, CEO, that is Ezra Chiloba. Yes. How, how do you apportion these challenges to having contributed to what 2017 became eventually? It is hard to answer some very technical and sensitive questions on behalf of other people. Personally, I had no problem with Secretariat. And you can be fair or if your memory is good. Mm -hmm. No any one time was my name mentioned in those wars. And because I am very poor in backbiting, I like minding my personal business. Up to date, I have never known why people were fighting, if there was a fight. Because I read these fights just like you are reading or how you are trying to interrogate. And so what would you tell the, the new commissioners as, as they come to office soon? What would you tell them? Because now you know the sort of culture that was at IEBC. What would be your warning for them to avoid such kind of a scenario? The new commissioners whom we are waiting to be appointed, the time that it will be ready, my advice is, As a commissioner, one, if there's any very sensitive office in our country, Kenya, during election, it's IPC. You need to come as a very sober individual, very neutral, ready to execute your mandate without fear or favor, without listening to the contestants. Because contestants will be always uh, trying to ensure nothing wrong is going to happen in the commission, which it is their right. You as a commissioner, you need just to follow things that are supposed to be done in the correct manner. Mm -hmm. I remember that uh, you resigned in April 2018. Um, you were three of you alongside uh, Commissioner Nkada and Commissioner Kulgat. And then you eventually appointed to be uh, to different missions, the three of them. Have you kept in touch? Have you been uh, talking also to the other three gentlemen, the Chabukati team? Hi. <laughs> So you're asking me whether I am in touch with Chabukati team? Yes, and also your colleagues who are now at different missions. I am in touch with the other two colleagues. There is uh, Ambassador Kurgat and Consulat and Kada. Yeah. When is the last time you spoke to Chairman Chabukati? They blocked me. What do you mean? Blocking? If you are blocked, you can't talk to someone. You're blocked on phone. So you have no means of having a chat with them. I can't. But with me, I've never blocked them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that, that, that's strange. And uh, Commissioner Akombe, have you been in touch? Yeah, we've been talking with Akombe. Mm -hmm. Not frequently, but once in a while. Okay. Maybe there's only one time I talked to Professor. I think mm -hmm. Professor did not block me. Professor has never blocked me. But uh, Chairman, yeah, Professor Gulia. In fact, there's a time there were some, there, there were some tragedies. As I was trying to find out whether they were safe, he also was trying to find whether I was safe. 
Mm -hmm. But yeah, the other two blocked me. That's what I knew. Specifically, Chairman Chabukati and uh, Commissioner Molu. Yeah, Professor has never blocked me. I've never blocked him. So if I want to talk to Professor today, I'll call and get him. Lessons for life? I mean, lessons that you learned from all that process in life? Once you become a leader, you know, our, our Lord God created us individually very, we are fearful and wonderful made by God. But apart from our individual differences, each human being has got its own personal peculiar thing in you as an individual. And this peculiar thing is not easily known by anybody. It is you who knows it. And what I learned in, in IBC you know, many people, uh, because maybe I was not being mentioned now and then, many people thought I was not following what was going on in, in the mission. And it reached up in the mission. You know, you know when I when someone is not making noise, is not being seen here, is not mentioned here, people will think it's just there to to fill the quorum. Uh, so my parting shot is when I go especially to a new office and I realize and I study you that you are finding me to be a fool. In fact, I will act as a dunderhead.